Okay, so here is your example. Determine the six trig ratios for the point, naming it P, this is your X and Y coordinates, that lies on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. Draw a diagram to model the situation. Okay, so note that these are not some of the trig ratios that you're expected to have memorized, right? But it does lie on the unit circle. Note also they're less than one, right? So we, and no, I'm not asking you to find me the angle because you couldn't do that without a calculator. I'm asking you to find me the trig ratios of that point on the unit circle. So let's draw you a picture so you can see what you're looking at, right? Always, always, always makes more sense, right? Here is my x, y axis. Here is my unit circle. So the point negative three fifths, negative four fifths. What quad am I in? Three, right? My x and y coordinate, right, are, so I don't, I'm just going to put it here. I'm just going to extend that out for a little bit. And what I'm saying is that the intersection of the terminal arm of an angle being measured in standard position and the unit circle, I know the coordinates right here are negative three-fifths and negative four-fifths. That's what they're calling point P right there. And that's the coordinates of that point. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. So we'll try a few and then you pick the one you like because it doesn't matter, okay? Okay, so we will start here. We know that the cosine ratio, the cosine ratio of an angle is the x coordinate of the point on the unit circle. And we know the sine ratio of the angle is the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle. So, hello. Then I know the cosine ratio then is negative three-fifths and the sine ratio is negative four-fifths. That's easy enough, yes? Then you need to remember that your reciprocal, your reciprocal ratios, which one goes with which, what is the reciprocal of cos? Secant, Secant of theta then is, flip the fraction, negative five-thirds. And the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And again, it's the reciprocal meaning, flip the fraction, sine of course stays the same. Hey, we got four of them. All right? Now, the tangent ratio what do we know about the tangent ratio on the unit circle? Sine over, cosine. sine over cosine, which again, same denominators. So what happens? They cancel off. The negatives are both going to cancel off and you get four thirds. Does that make sense? Right from here, four over three. And then your cotan, which is the reciprocal of tan, would just be three-fourths. Uh, that's all I want. The six trig ratios. They're not asking to solve for the angle, just what are the ratios? Is that easy or what? Yeah. Okay. So then, of course, we'll give you something else. 
All right. So, what if I'm not on the unit circle? So, example. The point A, which has coordinates negative 5 and 12, clearly not on the unit circle. My x and y's are greater than 1. Right? This is not on the unit circle. Lies on the terminal arm. Lies on the terminal arm. Terminal arm of an angle. Of an angle in standard position. In standard position. Find the exact values, which again means no calculator, of all six trig ratios and draw a diagram to model the situation. So let's draw a picture so you can see what you're looking at. And there are a couple of ways to do this. So, this is our scenario. And negative 5 12, what quad is that in? Two. Two, right? So what they're saying is there's a point A that lies on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. So what I'm saying here is somewhere in quad two. Right, there's the terminal arm of the angle in standard position. And out here somewhere, I have point A that's sitting around on the line, negative 5 and 12. Okay. And I want you to find all of the trig ratios for this angle right here being measured in standard position. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do this, and I'm going to see if this makes sense to you. This is not on the unit circle, right? Just kind of randomly there. So imagine if this distance is going out that far out. Remember, my unit circle, my radius is 1, right? So it's like, mm, there's my unit circle, right? This is the point on the unit circle, right? But I'm way out there. So that's what I want to show you. Like the unit circle is like here, and this terminal arm is cutting through the unit circle way out. Okay. Excuse the interruption. If your class has a Chromebook cart in it, can you call the office, please? I'm looking for Chromebook carts. Thank you. Okay. So take a look. So let's drop down a perpendicular line of both. And we have nesting triangles. Okay? That literally they have the same reference, right? Reference angle. Okay? So. And I know this big triangle, right, from here to here is negative 5. And, of course, this side here is positive 12. Okay. But I don't know this. I need to find this hypotenuse first. Okay. Okay. So, of the big triangle, so number one, of 
big triangle. Use pithy to solve for hypotenuse. Okay, of the big triangle. So we know that is negative 5 squared plus 12 squared is going to be equal to my hypotenuse squared, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. 12 squared is 144. 25 144 is 169. And then I take the square root. Oh, look at how pretty that works out. So I know the hypotenuse of the big triangle is 13. Is everybody okay there? Okay. Do you understand that these two triangles, the one right here, and this one are similar triangles. And do you understand what, the, what it means when you have similar triangles? Angles are all the same. You have just changed the size, right, by the same ratio, right? Like ratios, the dimensions are still the same. So if I wanted to go from the big triangle to the small triangle, size-wise, right? Well, I know this side is 1, because that's my radius on my unit circle. But the big triangle is 13. So, to, does it make sense that if I divide this one by 13, I get 1? I'm making it smaller. So, but what I divide one side by, i got to do them all. So, if I divide that by 13... And that by 13, then, I'm just going to blow this up so you can see it, then what I have is my point on the unit circle where my x coordinate now is going to be negative 5 over 13, and my y coordinate is going to be 12 over 13. Which tells me, right, so therefore your x coordinate is negative 5 over 13, and your y coordinate is 12 over 13, and I'm back to the other example, there's my cosine and there's my sine, because now I'm on the unit circle. Right? So then I have, so find them to divide all sides of big triangle by hypotenuse. Now have coordinates of point on the unit circle. Because now I know these coordinates, right? Because if I know these side lengths, then those are the coordinates. And you can go back to the first one. So your, so your sine ratio of theta is positive 12 over 13. And therefore your cosecant which it's reciprocal, is 13 over 12. Your cosine ratio is your x-coordinate, which is negative 5 over 13, right? Less than 1. So its reciprocal secant is negative 13 over 5. Your tangent ratio, that's why I did sine first, 
is your sine over your cos, same denominator, so it's just 12 over negative 5. Right? Put the negative in the top. And then your cotan is just flip that upside down. And there are your six trig ratios. Does that make sense? Okay. Then, why don't you try one? Example. Determine the exact values, which again, no calculator, of the other five trig ratios if I tell you the sine ratio of theta is negative two roots of two over three and theta lies on the interval pi and 3 pi over 2. Oh, I'm going to do it with you because I'm going to show you the other way of doing it and see if it makes sense to you. And then again, pick either way, right, that you like. So, determine the exact values of the other five trig ratios if the sine of theta is negative 2 root to 2 over 3 and theta lies on the interval pi to 3 pi over 2. Lots of information in there, right? First thing you always need, like the, it helps when you start doing this, draw a diagram. Just give yourself a visual of what you're looking at, okay? Draw a diagram. So, we go do that. Hmm. And, of course, the first thing we need to do when we draw a diagram, great, what quad are we in? That's always the first thing. What quad are you in? And that's where the pieces of information in the question are, right? What quad are you in? Negative 2 root to 2 over 3 is, so again, if you picture your unit circle, right? That is the y coordinate that is lot, right? The y coordinate of the terminal arm. Uh, it's telling you it's negative. So that breaks you down to 2 out of the 4 quads. Sine is negative in 3 and 4. Okay? So you know it's one of those. Then they have to give you another piece of information, either this or they tell you the cotine is positive or something of that nature, right? But then they told you the angle actually lies between, like the angle for this is actually between pi and 3 pi over 2, which is quad 3. Okay, they're always going to give you two pieces of information to figure out because one piece is only going to break you down to two of the four quads, right? Because all of your trig ratios are positive in two and negative in two. This tells you you're in quad three, right? And what you know, yeah, I don't know the x coordinate, but I know the y coordinate is looking pretty ugly there at negative two, two root two over three. You're looking for, so I hope this makes sense to you when you draw the picture, okay? So you are looking for, if you find your x coordinate, does it make sense to you as soon as I have the sine and cosine x and y, then I can find all the others, okay? So the question becomes, you need to find your x-coordinate. 
I'm hoping that makes sense. Yes? So, step number two, find missing coordinate. I make it sound so easy. I just find that missing coordinate. But now there are several ways that you can do this, right? Uh, anybody have any? So I want to show you another method of doing it, all right? Because sometimes it's, and again, of, of the one we just did or this one, take your pick, right? Because you can still use pithy. Right? Because that is on the unit circle. That is the Y, right? Or, or I could do this as well. I don't like that number. I don't like it. So what if I made a bigger triangle? And see my fraction on the bottom? The last one I divided, right, by my hypotenuse to get one, what if I times them all by three to make the big triangle? Right, in which case, this side would be three. This side here, I'm multiplying them all by three, would be negative two root two. And I still don't have my x, but now I'm just dealing with the bigger triangle. That's all. So look what you've got here now in the big triangle. I'm just going to make it here. Because it doesn't matter which way you see it. It's both going to be the same way. I have a right angle triangle where this is 3. This is negative 2 roots of 2. This is the angle. And I want to find the missing side. I'm still going to use pithy, right? but I'm just not using it with fractions. So the first way you did it with that, I mean, you're still using pithy any way you look at it, but it's if, if you wanna use fractions or not, okay? Small triangle, you have fractions. Big triangle, I have this. I still have to find, so those of you that like the other way, please just do it again, right? All I'm saying here is now I have x squared plus negative two roots two squared is equal to three squared. Big triangle, right? So then I have x squared plus negative two squared is positive four. Root two squared is two. So I have, that's eight. So I have x squared is equal to one. Square root, square root, x is equal to one right there. Okay. So, this is what I know. And I know I'm in quad three, so I actually knew this x was going to be a negative, right? So, your cosine ratio then is, look at the triangle, right? Negative 1 over 3. Just looking at this. And therefore, secant of theta is negative 3. You knew your sine ratio was negative 2 roots of 2 over 3. So therefore, my cosecant is negative 3 over 2 roots of 2. Your tangent ratio, I can do it from the cos and sine, or seriously, I can do it right from this triangle. Now the big triangle, the opposite over the adjacent, right? Negative, negative makes it positive. So it's two roots of two over one, which is just two roots of two. And the cotan was one over two roots of two positive. So you can use the big triangle or you still had to find that X. Okay, so that's, you can do that. I just wanna show you, it ends up being the same thing. It's just 
take your pick which way you want. If I use the small triangle, right, I'm still doing the same thing. What you have here now is this was 1. This was negative root 2 over 2 over 3. And you still need to find your x. And that is your sign. And this is your x. It's still going to be the same thing. x squared plus negative 2 roots of 2 over 3 squared is equal to 1. Right? x squared plus, well, I know the top is 8 and the bottom is 9. x squared, squared, sorry, right? Oh, no, I squared it. There. Squared. So now I have 1 minus 8 over 9, which is 9 over 9, which, of course, is 1 ninth that you take the square root of. And you get your x coordinate one third mm, on the small circle. Negative because I'm in quad three. And you see you're going to get the same numbers. So it didn't matter if you want to take the numbers from the big triangle or the small triangle. They're still going to work out, right? Are you with me on that? So just take your pick. It doesn't matter because you're doing the same thing. Is everybody okay there? Morgan? So pick which one you like to do. What the issue is, is you need to know what quad you're in so you knew that that cosine or that adjacent side was negative. Because whenever you're finding the missing side because you've squared it, if you just go solve it, you're always going to have a positive value. You have to, the grade 12 piece of it, is recognizing, oh, I'm in quad three, therefore that adjacent side is negative. Because using pithy, gonna give you side lengths, but it, they're all positive, because you squared everything. You need to put the negative piece in. Does that make sense? Okay. So, here's another example for you. Is this more like the same? Kind of. If, if the cosecant ratio of an angle is positive and the cosine ratio of the angle is negative 5 sevenths, find the other 5 trig ratios. Let you do that one on your own. Back on. So first of all, did anybody get there to the end? And the negatives and positives are important, right? Because they changed. So did everybody get that? Of whichever method you wanted to use, which makes it doesn't matter, right? Whatever makes sense to you. Uh, you might notice a couple of things. I did not reduce the square root of twenty-four. Because, of course, you can, right? 24 goes into 24. I could actually break it down to two roots of six, right? Remember grade 11, the pain, the pain, and the pain of the radical unit in grade 11? Well, those are grade 11 concepts. Therefore, we are not marking you on them. So you can actually leave it like that. You do not have to reduce, okay? Same with the radical on the denominator. Remember in grade 11, your proper form was to rationalize, and that all is still proper form, but in grade 12, we are, we are looking for you to understand very specific concepts. So I'm, gonna, so I'm doing this the same way the provincial exam does it. You can leave it in this form. If you, and you're fine, you get full marks. If you go on and reduce it, right, which of course is the proper form, and which of course when you go to calculus, that would be expected to be done. If you go on and reduce it and simplify it and make a mistake, right, because that happens sometimes, I have to take a half mark off. If you leave it like this on the exam and the test, you get full marks. 
understanding if you're going on to calculus, you would be obviously be expected to always reduce that. How would you reduce that? <laughs> well, the square root of 24, a perfect square that's a factor of 24 is 4. Oh, 4, yeah. Oh, I didn't think of it. 4 times 6. So root 24 actually reduces to 2 roots of 6. So I'm going to say be careful about that. Okie doke. As in don't do it. Don't do it when I have to mark it, because if you make a mistake, I have to take a half mark off. I think by now we've realized a half mark can be up to 2%, depending on how much the test is worth. Just leave it. Make it easy for you. Okay? Because we're looking for a very specific concept here, and it's not rationalizing the denominator. How many marks would you say your exam is? Uh, the provincial exam is usually out of 90. So what's yours going to be Yeah, we're all not. It's just math. We just change the numbers. You know that, right? Like, the concepts are going to be exactly the same as what was on the provincial exam. I just changed the numbers. It's math. Like, there's nothing else you can do. It's not going to be all brand new shit, right? <laughs> same questions. We just change the numbers. Okay. Yes, my dear. Are you having a provincial exam this year? Not a provincial. You just have an in-class, okay. like a school-based exam. No provincials again for this year. Okay, so take a look at this then. Again, little slight variations on this stuff. Given 10 of theta is equal to 5 halves. And the cosecant of theta is strictly less than 0. So determine P of theta. Okay. So the question here is not how to do the math. The question here is what they're asking you to find. Right? That's the issue. So and I see this, this is an exam question. And speaking of exams. And kids got, like, again, remember what P theta means. That's the big thing. Because kids think, oh, you need to go solve for the angle. They're asking for the angle. They're not, right? This is math shorthand saying the point on the unit circle when your angle is being measured in standard position, where is the terminal arm? So P of theta actually means what is the X and Y coordinate of that, of that angle being measured in standard position, which you now know is the cosine ratio of the angle and the sine ratio of the angle. That is the X and Y coordinate of where the terminal arm of an angle being measured in standard position intersects the unit circle. And that's what P stands for, the point. Okay, so you're looking for your X and Y coordinate, which you now know is your sine and cos, and these are the clues I have given you to go find that. Now, can you? Got to know what quad you're terminating in. Need to find your missing side. Draw yourself a picture. Seriously, draw yourself a picture will help you. See what you can do. Okay, so now that you need, know, you need to find the cosine ratio and the sine ratio of the angle. Okay, so... First things always, what quad are you in? Your tangent ratio is positive. Mm, so that would be 1 and 3, right? At the same time, though, your cosecant is negative. So that means you're in quad 3. Did we get that far? And that would be important. Okay, that's the first thing. Where are you? 
Now that you know you're in quad three, when I go look for my answers, I know my cosine is going to be negative, and I know my sine is going to be negative. Those numbers are going to be negative because I'm in quad three, and that's my x and y coordinate. Does that make sense? I'm here. Okay. Next problem is I have given you the tangent ratio of the angle, right? Measured in standard position that is ending in quad three is five halves. Right? Which I know I'm on the unit circle somewhere, right? Which is not going to really help me right now. But I do know... Mm, big triangle. I do know that my tangent ratio is, and this is my angle being measured, is 5 opposite over adjacent. And because I'm in quad 3, they're both negative. Right? Once I have that, I can use the big triangle or the small, because, but any way you look at it, I need to find that side first. Does that make sense? So, I know negative 5 squared plus negative 2 squared is going to be equal to that big hypotenuse squared. So, 25 plus 4, so 29. I have to take the square root. So, square root of 29 is my hypotenuse of the big triangle. Is that okay? So, now that I know that, right, to get onto the unit circle, I need to divide everything by the square root of 29 so that my hypotenuse is 1. And then I can read those off. So my coordinates then, negative uh, 2, what is it? Negative 2 over the square root of 29. And my y coordinate, negative 5 over the square root of 29. And you could have solved that any way you want. My big thing is, is did you get the fact that they're both negative because you're in quad 3? And did you get your ratios any way you needed to? Is there anybody that got it? Excellent. Those of you that didn't, do you understand where you went wrong would be the issue now. Oh, I'm supposed to do that. Okay. Okie dokie. So, how about this now then? Example. Determine the approximate values. <gasps> Guess what approximate means? Calculator. calculator. Calculator question, right? As soon as it says exact values, there it will be in the non-calculator portion of your test and your exam. As soon as it says approximate, you know, ooh. Have to use the calculator, and you guys all like that. So, determine the approximate values for all six trig ratios for the angle theta equals 4.2. So, first thing super important here, your angle has no measurement on it. So, you need to understand right away, this angle is being measured in radians, okay? Otherwise, it would have a degree on it. So, your angle being measured in radian measure. Radian measure because... No 
degree sign. Degree sign. Symbol. Symbol, I guess. Symbol. Okay, remember angles now. If it doesn't have degree, it's it is in radian measure all the time. Okay, so the other thing is, is so I have, I'm just going to draw a picture again because the trig, it sort of helps. Just to visualize, oh, just to visualize, I'm not unit circle, sorry. Just to visualize what you're looking at here. Determine the approximate values for all six trig ratios for the angle being measured in standard position that is equal to 4.2 radians. So my question to you, before you even start doing stuff, what quad are you in? Yeah. Who is that smart person that just said that so quickly? Yes. So you're somewhere in quad three, right? And we're saying this angle being measured is 4.2. How do you know that? Well, who answered that for me? Can you tell him? How did, I, how did he know he was, it was there? Brilliant. That's actually exactly what you do, right? Halfway is pi, which is approximately 3.14. All the way around is 2 pi, so that's 6.28 radians, approximately. So, and halfway between them, just add them up, right? I'm giving you just, so, so 4.2 has to be in quad 3. Just to visualize where you're at. Okay, so how am I gonna find my trig ratios? Fun. So let's do cos. So the cosine ratio of 4.2 radians, because remember, that's where your angle goes. So the cosine ratio of 4.2 radians, um, what do we do? Uh, shove it in the calculator. You're not solving that. <laughs> but you need to make sure you're on radian measure, right? The calculator needs to know what uh, your unit of measure is. So your final answer, always in math if not stated, final answers to three decimal places. Okay? So you plug that in. You're in quad three, so it should make sense to you that the number that came up was negative, wasn't it? because your x-coordinate is negative. So that is negative 0 0.490, which just so you know, so you understand, what they're saying there is that is the x-coordinate on the unit circle of this angle of 4.2, right? We've been doing them in fractions because we've been using exact values. But fractions and decimals are the same thing, right? So if the cosine of that is this, then what is, what is the reciprocal of cos? What is the reciprocal? Which one? Which of the trig ratios is the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. So then the secant ratio of 4.2 radians is 1 over, you can do the negative or you can write it either way, the cosine of 4.2, because 4.2 is negative 0 point, or you can plug in your calculator either way, because this is the same thing, right, 0 0.490. Your calculus, so the cosine of 4.20 is this decimal. Your secant is 1 over the cosine of the exact same ratio. So either way you want to plug that in, right, you're going to get the same answer. It's just a matter of how you want to punch it in, right? Fraction 1 over the cosine of 4.2.
right? There you go. Did we all get that? How come I didn't get that? Oh, because I'm in degrees. See what happens if you're not in the right math? I'm going, uh, what happened there? Uh, there you go. My calculator is in degrees. See how important that is, right? To be in the right ones, because I'm going, yeah, that's not right. And so switching to, there we go. Did I get that right? Let's try that one more time. Fraction 1 over cos of 4.2. Hmm, is that a little bit better? Yeah. Right? Negative again. Right? Negative again because it is the reciprocal of cos. So negative 2.0. Four zero, yes. Zero point three nine. Make sure you put the zero for the third decimal there, right? Okay. Then you have your sine ratio of four point two. Again, just plug it into your calculator. You will get negative point eight seven two which again is the y coordinate of that spot on the unit circle check it out less than one right that is the y coordinate there but now your cosecant of 4.2 then is one over your sine of 4.2 or one over that negative whichever way you want to put it in Right, fraction one over sine of 4.2. Negative again, because you're in quad three, so that always makes sense. Negative 1.147. So I'm just going to put it here. Cosecant 4.2, negative 1.147. Right, just how do you plug it into your calculator? That's all I'm showing you. Your tangent ratio, 4.2, again, calculator, tan of 4.2, quad 3, note that it comes up positive, which is kind of cool, right, these are all ratios, not angles, and of course your cotan, of 4.21 over the tangent ratio of 4.2. And again, just plug it into your calculator. 1 divided by tan of 4.2. And you would also get a positive number because you're in quad. So, the approximates are like, you know, how to plug it into a calculator, and that's about it. Yes? Are we okay? Okay. So, last little bit today. Put it all together. Going back to, kind of going full circle. And going back to where we started today. Or finished off yesterday. Simplify the following trig expressions. Um, using exact values. So what are we back to? No calculator. Gave you just a little taste of it, so, you know, you could have fun, but no calculator. Like a drug dealer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little taste and then take it away. Okay, so I give you this. A. Okay, we're we're going to do a few of these. Secant 
of negative pi over 4 times the cotan of negative 2 pi over 3 times the tangent ratio of negative 5 pi over 4. So, exact values always means it's the angles and trig ratios and xy coordinates on your unit circle. Right? So we're back to where we ended yesterday. When you had that worksheet and you were just asked to do one. Right? Find me the secant ratio of an angle negative pi over 4. Well, now I'm putting them together. To simplify, yes? Okay. So, what do one, one at a time? Literally do one at a time. What is the secant ratio of negative pi over 4? So, couple of things. Yeah, couple of things just to keep yourself organized. With your reciprocal ones, because I see this all the time. With your reciprocal ones, we actually write it down what it is. It's 1 over the cosine ratio, right? Do that step first. 1 over the cosine ratio of negative pi over 4. It's just to help you keep yourself organized, okay? Because I see that happen all the time that kids forget to flip the fraction at the end is what happens, right? Okay, now remember, on your unit circle, all you ever need to know is what is the cosine ratio of pi over 4 That in that first reference angle. The negative is telling you what direction you're going, right? That's all the negative is telling you. So if you look on your unit circle, which... Of course, you're always starting, right, standard position. The negative is saying you're going this way. Pi over 4 is the size of the angle, which is literally in quad 4. Yes? Is everybody good there? This is negative pi over 4 which is the reflection of the reference right here at pi over 4. Your x-coordinate is exactly the same, and it's going to be positive, right? Because you're literally right there. So what is the cosine ratio for any multiple of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2, yes? So 1 over... And 1 over, and you're in quad 4, where your x-coordinate is positive, right? The negative in front of the angle is just telling you which direction to go. Then don't look at it again. So you're in quad 4, where you have root 2 over 2. And then flip the fraction. I always find kids, if they try to do all of it at once, they get mixed up. Like... Because there's just a lot. So then flip the fraction. That is 2 over root 2. That's just the secant. Right? Then the next one. So now I'm multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. The next one, don't look at anything else. Just the cotan of negative 2 pi over 3. Right? So, remember what that one is before you start going, where the hell am I, and start putting some stuff in. Remember that the cotan is actually the cosine ratio of negative 2 pi over 3 over the sine ratio of negative 2 pi over 3. Okay? Then, right, two pi, like, 
go look first. Go look in quad one. What is your ratios of your cos over your sine of just pi over three? What is it? Just quad one. All the multiples of pi over three are gonna have the same ratio, okay? All of them have the same ratio. You never need anything more than quad one. What is the x and y in quad one? One half and root three over two. And we also know, we just take the numerators now, so let's not work hard. So we know the, the number is going to be one over root three, yes? All I need now is, is it gonna be a negative or positive ratio? What quad is negative to pi over three in? Yes, you're going in this direction, negative. This is one pi, there's two over here. You're in quad three where the x and the y coordinate is both negative, right? So it cancels out, and I'm down here at positive root 3. Like, there's a lot of information going in in simplifying just one of these things. Last one. Tangent ratio of negative 5 pi over 4. You do a happy dance when you see this. Because what is the tangent ratio of all multiples of pi over 4? Look at it. 1. Because at pi over 4 and all multiples of it, sine and cosine x and y are the same. Tan is them dividing. You see tan of anything, pi over 4, any multiple of pi over 4, you go, yay, because it's 1. That's the ratio, right? The ratio is 1. But what you need to look at, right, is what quad are you in? Because if is it negative 1 or positive 1? And again, negative 5 pi over 4 is the negative is telling you you're going in this direction. 5 pi over 4 is kind of 1 more than 1 pi, yes? Well, 1 pi is here, right? And I need one more, so I'm in quad 2, where my tangent is negative. And then just to fool the English teacher, so it looks like I was doing that all across, make sure you copy that. Um, you, my little one there, Zach, are very bad for that. Even though we're working down, right, we have to have this stuff all line up neatly. So you have to carry that down, right? I see lots of you, you'll just drop it here and bring it right down to the bottom. They can't do that. We're just fooling the English teachers where it looks like we're working across, but it actually makes way more sense to us to do one piece at a time, don't you think? But you still have to keep the rows even, okay? All right, then you get down here. Multiply three fractions together. How do I multiply three fractions together? Because negative one is just negative one over one. How do I multiply three fractions together? Multiply the tops. Two times one times negative one is negative two. Multiply across the bottom. Square root of two times the square root of three times, times one. How do I multiply radicals? Underneath, you multiply together, and you're done. I love how you say, are you serious? Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. The goal in this is you need to know your unit circle. You need to know your ratios. You need to know your negative and positive angles in both degrees and radians, right? That's what this type of a thing is testing you on. Right? Can you figure it out? Okay. So, how about this one? Try this on your own. Cosecant 
of negative 7 pi over 6 times the cosine of positive 11 pi over 6 plus the cotangent ratio of negative pi over 4 times the secant ratio of positive 5 pi over 3. Okay. However, you, I'm just, give me a second, because I want to let you know, because everybody always says, how much work do I need to show? You get a half a mark for each of those. This would be a two mark question. And you would get a half a mark for giving me the right ratio of each one of them. So the amount of work you need to show or do is how much you need to show or do to keep yourself organized. Not me. It's not about showing work here. Do you know what these ratios are? I'm showing you this is a way to help to keep yourself organized when they're complicated. But when they're not complicated and you can figure it out, feel free. Do you know what I mean? If you need to show work, then do that to keep yourself organized, but not to show me work because there's enough. Okay, so cosecant of negative 7 pi over 6. Cosecant is 1 over which one? Which one? Cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Sine of negative 7 pi over 6. So what is sine of negative 7 pi over 6? First thing I do, just look at pi over 6 because all of the multiples of pi over 6 have the same sine ratio. So the pi over 6 is 1 half for sine. Then I just need to determine if it's a positive or negative depending on what quad I'm in. And negative 7 pi over 6 is in what quad? 2. Two. Two where my sine ratio is positive. So therefore, that first one, the cosecant ratio of negative seven pi over six is actually two, positive two. However, you may have figured that out in your head, right? Cosine of 11 pi over six, well, that's a happy dance because that's just in the first rotation. That's in quad four right? Cosine is where it's going to be positive. All of the cosine ratios of multiples of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And again, it's positive, so now I'm just bringing this down. Plus, cotan of negative pi over 4. Again, remember the cotan is the cos of negative pi over 4 over the sine of negative pi over 4, right? Cosine and sine of pi over 4, right? Again, just like with the tan, the cotan, we do the happy dance because sine and cosine of all multiples of pi over 4 are the same. So this is going to be equal to 1, right? I just need to know what quad I'm in. Negative pi over 4 is? Negative pi over 4 is? 4. 4, where cotan and tan are both negative. So I get plus negative 1. Did everybody get that one? However, you may have done it in your brain. Right? And then the last one, secant again, remember that's 1 over cos of 5 pi over 3, which is 1 over cos of 5 pi over 3. All multiples of pi over 3 for your cos is 1 half. 5 pi over 3 puts me in quad 
5 pi over 3 puts me in quad. Still waiting. 4. 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi. You're shot one shy. Where cos is positive. So your last number. This is what I'm measuring you on. This is where you're getting scored. Do you have these four numbers? 2. Positive root 3 over 2. Negative 1 times positive 2. So if you, if you fuck up the answer after that, you're not even going to take the mark. Sorry? You, you get a half mark for each of those, right? And then where you screw up from there, you're going to lose your half marks. Like if you get down here and you have the wrong one, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Okay. Do I take off another mark? Because when you added them together with your wrong number, you got the wrong answer. So did you think I was going to take off another half mark? No, never mind. Stupid questions. It's not actually. I know teachers who do that. That's a stupid. That's stupid, right? Don't you think? Yeah, if you add correctly, right? Don't get me wrong. So you got one of these wrong. So you lose half a mark. But then you went on and you added it correctly and simplified it correctly, then you would only lose the half mark, right? If you go on to add it and subtract it or whatever I'm asking you to do it, and you make another mistake doing that, then you would lose another half mark. Do you know what I mean? But it's called a carry through error, right? You have an error up here, but you did everything else right. Like you're not going to lose more marks for it. That's why the answer is never important. Okay, simplifying now, right? I can cancel those out. I get root 3 and multiplying those, root 3 minus 2. I do not need to see all this work. That was work that I was using to try to show you what all the little thoughts that are going through your head. Did anybody get that answer? Yay. Okay, one last one then. This, I think, was worth four marks on the exam. Four. Four. Wait, do you want me to say it again? Four. <laughs> okay, see if you can do this one now. Negative secant negative four pi over three times cotam negative 240 degrees plus secant 13 pi over 6 times cosecant negative 4 pi over 3. Got a little bit of everything. Right? First thing you need to do is find the secant ratio of the angle negative 4 pi over 3. So, to help yourself, first thing you need to know that's 1 over the cosine of negative 4 pi over 3. And then, two things you're looking at at cosine. The first is pi over 3 multiples, right? Cosine, all the cosine ratios of multiples of pi over 3 is 1 half. Then you just need to determine if it's positive or negative. And that's not based on that negative sign. Again, remember the negative sign of the angle is just telling you which direction you're going in, right? And then 4 pi over 3 is just 1 more than 1 pi. So you're in quad 2, where the ratio is negative. So I have negative times negative 2, which gives me 2. 1 over 1 half. Okay. Next one. Cotan, you need to remember that that's the cosine over the sine ratios. Negative, so now, negative 240, right? You can look for 240, or you can recognize that the, what is the reference angle of 240? 
60. Everything's from 4 to 1. 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees, what is your sine and your cosine? Your cosine and your sine at 60 degrees. It's the same as the multiples of pi over 3, because that's what pi over 3 is, 60 degrees. So I know my cosine is 1 half, my sine is root 3 over 2, right? Which you also know that's going to be 1 over root 3. And now I ne just need to know what quad I'm in. Negative 240 is which quad? 2. Two. Right? In quad 2, your cosine is negative, so this whole thing is going to be negative. Right? So we can bring it down here. Negative 1 over root 3. Plus, secant of pi over 6. Again, you need to remember that's 1 over the cos. 13 pi over 6. Which is 13 pi over 6. Uh, that would be 2 and, oh, 1 more pi. So you're in quad 1. Cosine is positive. Ratio is root 3 over 2. So that's how you get your 2 over root 3 and positive. I'll move this here. And then the last one. Cosecant, you need to remember, is 1 over the sine. Negative 4 pi over 3. Sine of any multiples of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Negative 4 pi over 3, negative direction, 1 more than 1 pi puts me in quad 2, where this is positive. So then I flip it, and that's how I got my four terms. Sorry, I've made a mess here. Now you need to clean it up, right? Those are your four terms. Negative and negative is 2 times 1 over root 3, negative root 3, so the whole thing is negative 2 over root 3, that first one. I made a little bit of a mess there, but I hope you're okay. Yeah, a little bit of a mess. That's 1 over root 3, negative. Plus, 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. Okay, this is where you're going to lose a mark. This is not, it has to be simplified to one fraction. Okay, you have two separate terms there. It has to be under one fraction. So, how do I do that? Oh, I need a common denominator, don't I? Or, I can radical the denominator. Look at this. Square root of 3, how about I just multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the square root of 3. And I get negative 2 root 3 over 3 plus 4 over 3. Oh, didn't that just turn out nicely? So then, super easy to simplify to one fraction. It must be simplified to one fraction. Yes, dear? No, you never need to simplify it. They're picky on this one, yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Is everybody okay? Call it a year. Call it a year. Okay, so that's it again. So your assignment, you're going to work hard this weekend. 201, questions 1 to 3. You need to skip some, okay? Careful with what I want you to do here. 8, 9, 12 to 14 is your assignment, right? Uh, make sure you...